I was working in Minneapolis, Minnesota with a guy named Howie Kirsten doing shows in a hotel lounge. And there was a guy in the audience right in the front with a younger woman and he just sat there expressionless. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get him to laugh. After the show, the woman came up to me and said she enjoyed the show and her father did too. And I said, I wasn't sure your father was having a good time. He never responded at all. And she said, oh, my father is deaf. Well, after the show, I went to a restaurant with Howie. It was one of those all night places. Could have been a Denny's. Happened to be a country kitchen. To picture Howie, he had a beer belly and not much hair. He was bald, but he had long white hair on the sides of his head. And he looked like the Gerber baby food baby. If you can imagine the Gerber baby food baby with a cigarette hanging from his lips. There's a drunk guy in the restaurant walking from table to table, talking to everyone, a real friendly kind of drunk. He was the waiter. No, I'm kidding, he wasn't the waiter. He was just a guy. And uh, we got done eating and went to the car and Howie was standing by the passenger door. So I said, the door's unlocked, Howie, get in. But he just stood there staring at the ground and I suddenly realized how he was urinating in the parking lot. So naturally, I turned on my headlights and backed up the car so I could shine the lights on him. And then how he didn't care because he wasn't looking up and he didn't see what I saw. The drunk guy in the restaurant was pointing out the window at Howie and I could see that he was yelling. And everyone in the restaurant stood up and looked out the windows. And then how he looked up and he saw everyone in the windows standing and looking at him, and everyone in the restaurant started to applaud. The next day, Howie was worried the manager of the lounge where we were working would find out about what happened, but the manager didn't say anything until the end of the week. And at the end of the week, he was paying us, and Howie said, were the shows okay? And the manager said, sure, you did fine over here, but I heard you got a standing ovation at the country kitchen. There was, a, there was a Holiday Inn in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where I did a memorably bad show. I did the shows in the lounge there, and the, and the hotel room where I stayed was room 101. When you left the lounge at the Holiday Inn at Sioux Falls, South Dakota, you had to walk right past room 101. So my first night there was when I did that bad show, and I went straight to my room so I wouldn't have to be around the people in the audience. And as they walked past my room, I could hear them talking about me saying things like, wasn't he awful? I felt so sorry for him. Well, I want you to know I had good shows the rest of the week and I got booked back and I became one of their top headliners, which would be very impressive except for the fact that it was the Holiday Inn in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. There was just one thing that I would refuse to do when they booked me back. I would refuse to ever stay in room 101 again. And I didn't want to be in that room and listen to the audience as they walked by. But sometimes I think about those days. That was a long time ago. It was decades ago and I I, I wish I could live it again just one more night. I'd like to stay in room 101 just one more time. And that'll never happen because for one thing, the hotel was demolished and they rebuilt a different hotel there. But it makes me think if the bad things from the past seem like things we'd like to relive, just imagine how much this moment right now will mean to us in the future. I quit doing comedy in October 1993 and I switched to performance poetry. The money was better doing poetry shows on concert stages than it was in comedy rooms. And I was touring with another stand-up comic at the time from Los Angeles and I made this decision and I told him from now on performance poetry instead of stand-up comedy. And he said, you have more of a poet's rap than a comic's. And he was right.